Hi everybody. Just coming on to have a little chat about airbrushing. I know you guys wanted to do a bit of airbrushing. So I'm just going to see if anybody's around. I know I normally do these on a Sunday night on the main page, so um, but I've wanted to do the lives in this group just specifically, so um, that's why I've come in here. So on. Hey Sylvia. Oh, he's coming on. Uh, if there's anyone hanging around, no. Um, hi Valentina. Hey. Um, and um, what well, from my Facebook user? I'm here. Hello, I'm here. Facebook user. I think you have to um, do something to let um, Streamyard know you're here. But in the meantime, I'll say hello anyway. Um, yeah, I wanted to do, try and get a few lives going in this group so that um, it was a bit more of a community feel. And then I'll do the main one tomorrow as well. But I've got the white tiger over there. And we'll have a look at some airbrushing. We'll just give it a couple more minutes, see if anybody's about. If there's any way of telling me who you are, Facebook user, that would be really helpful, even if you write your name. So I probably know who you are, um, but it's just because it's the first time using StreamYard in here. Um, <laughs> I'm here. Tell me your name. God, this is like some secret game. It's Jane. Hello, Jane. What proper Jane? Jane, Jane with, with my Jane. Must be my Jane. Can't be someone else's Jane. Um, I think you have to accept StreamYard um, and say yes to it so that it can use your name. Otherwise, I'm going to call you Facebook user for now and forever just because it'll amuse me. All right. Um, okay, let's have a little go. So um, it's, it's, it's way more informal tonight. I'll do the formal thing tomorrow. So if the kids come and go and things like that, spam Jane. <laughs> oh, spam Jane. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. Jane, Jane. I've got you. I thought for a horrid minute your hubby had joined us. Is your hubby joined us in here? That would be weird, um, but okay. So, um, I'll just take this off. No, what's the bit I can't put it back together? That's my airbrush. Hi, Karen. Okay, we've got a few people going. That's cool. As long as I've got someone to talk to, otherwise, I just feel more mental than usual. Um, this is my HPC Iwata. Oh, it's quite hard to do that because it's working backwards. Um, I love this gun. This is my top end gun. I've got lots and lots of different guns, but this is my top end one. And it's got a nice big cup. It's got a hole here so I can play with the chuck in there. If my needle's got too loose and it's spraying everywhere, I can tighten that up. And then it's also got a stopper on the back, which means if I don't want to um, pull all the way back, I can it, it can lock it down, so I don't do that. Um, other than that, it's just really precise. So the thing about airbrushes, he does watch, I know he does, um, bless him. Cake husbands, don't you love cake husbands? Um, the thing about airbrushes really is uh, buy the top end that you can afford. They're very simple bits of kit. The cheaper you go, the worse they are. It really is that simple. So um, don't spend more than you can, but try and invest a little bit. Um, if you get cheap ones, it's a bit like using a paint roller. Whereas if you get a decent quality one, then it's like having a fine, a fine paintbrush. It's absolutely fine if you just want to do an ombre around a cake or you're just going to turn it from white to black then get one of the cheap ones that's fine but if you if you wanted to go into details and stuff you're going to have to get one that's a bit nicer um, these are iwata um, the other ones i use are sparmax the other two brands i use they're very simple they're literally just a tapered needle oh, you won't be able to see it they're just a tapered needle inside a hole so obviously the more you pull it back the more you reveal the hole can you see that Backwards. There, see? Tiny little needle. If I pull it backwards, the needle disappears, letting the paint out. So things to be careful of, that tiny little needle there, if you bend that, so if, you're, if your gun starts acting weird or spraying all over the place or spitting, you've probably bent that tiny little needle there by dropping it or something like that. So try and keep the crown cap on and then, then you, don't, um, you don't damage it too much. Other than that, um it's just about keeping it clean if you can keep your airbrush clean it will last you for a very long time so how do you keep an airbrush clean you keep it clean by not letting it get dirty to start with so if you're working always uh, wash your color out straight away so i don't leave the color in the airbrush at all if i'm going to the toilet or if i'm putting it down or whatever i airbrush by my sink and that way as soon as i've got color in there as soon as i've finished i turn the tap on and I rush cold water straight through the cup and out the front 
Then I block the end with my thumb or with a tissue or whatever and pull back on the trigger. That creates an airlock and the air rushes back up through the car and cleans it out from the inside. The only time you're going to start coming unstuck with your airbrushes, whether they're expensive or cheap, is if you let colour dry in the cup. And if you let colour dry in the cup, it gets all congealed in the bottom where the needle is, starts your needle getting stuck. Then you're starting to take your needle apart and that's where you're going to come, on, come into problems straight away. So the best way to keep your airbrush nice long term is to make sure you keep it clean. If you do get to it's getting a bit sticky, let me just take this apart. It's never a good idea to take the pot now because if I can't put it back together, I'm stuck. But let's give it a go. You can undo this chuck. You don't need to take it off, just loosen it. And then you can hopefully, why is it not going to let me do it? Is it? There you go. Your needle out like that. I'm not going to pull it all out of the way because I don't, I don't trust it not to be able to get it back in uh, and then push it back in. If you find your airbrush is spraying, without you having any control so it doesn't matter whether you pull your trigger forwards or backwards it's still spraying it means your needle has come back slightly so undo it loosen the chuck push it in as, as hard as it can like till you reach and then tighten it. and you what it does is put the needle back in the hole and you'll stop indiscriminately spraying everywhere get it tightened back up okay so um yeah, uh, Iwatas, Iwatas come in a range. So uh, the, the bottom Iwata is a Neo uh, memory, 35, 40 pounds, something like that. Um, the top Iwata that Cassie Brown um, likes having, and I haven't bought one because I can't justify it, is about 600 pounds. Um, that's a lot of money for an air gun. But if you're doing, so Iwatas are um, art airbrushes, they're not cake airbrushes. So all the guys who do the vans and the cars, and you know, like the detailing and sort of like huge artworks and stuff, they all use Iwata. So they're looking at £600 up, up for those ones. The one I've got HPC is a couple down, and I think it was about £300 for the gun. And then you've got your compressor on top. Let me just show you the compressor. Um, it's actually attached over there, so I don't know how far it will come. This is, can you see that? Um, ah, there. So that's my uh, Silver Jet. I've had that a long time. The modern one, slightly easier to carry around, I'm just going to get it in shot, is the Sparmax. So Sparmax are bought by Iwata, so they're now sister companies. And I, the most of the guns, the Max 4s are the ones I use a lot. Um, I happen to have the HPC on because that's my cleanest gun. On here, you've got, um, well, I'm trying to get it in the shot, there. You've got a pressure gauge, which tells you how much pressure you want, how much PSI. So if you want to cover a white cake black really quickly, you're going to have your pressure all the way up. Um, if you want to do some really fine work, you can have your pressure down and then it's got our off button on the side. Really simple bit of kit. Um, I like curly hoses and things, you don't get them everywhere. Get the two together and that's, that's that. So they're really not, they're not um, difficult bits of kit if you look after them. They're, they're a bit deaverish, so if you don't look after them, they're going to bite you quite quite quickly so try and keep them clean and then they won't cause any problems okay so should we do a bit of airbrushing uh, before you start airbrushing you need a paper towel like that you don't want to airbrush without a paper towel in your hand all the time it has to live there in fact now if I haven't got one I can't even turn the airbrush off because it feels weird my hand feels weird so you've got to practice on here the reason being if you've got something wrong with your gun and you don't realise it, you don't want to spray that on your cake. If you've got pain on the front and you haven't realised it, it will shoot off the front and splat all over your cake. If your needle's bent, if you've got the wrong colour in, it's quite difficult to tell between black and brown and things like that. You don't want them to um, go on your cake. And also, you tend to get your eye in a little bit. If you work on your paper first, you'll get your eye in. Whereas if you shoot straight over to your cake, <clears throat> you'll end up getting your eye in on the cake, at which point you, you've messed it up. So, Paper in, um, and let's pin some colour. So our tiger, yeah, back to front. See if I'm going that way, it goes that way. It's really weird. There. So our tiger, uh, yes, he's orange, but he's also got some highlights that are yellow, and then the orange is dark, darkens down as well. So that's what we're going to go for. We'll start layering it up. We'll start with a light yellow. 
Then we'll layer over the orange and then we'll layer over some brown, see how we get on. So first up, put a bit of yellow in. I've got all sorts of colours here. I've got all sorts of brands. Oh, I'm going to call it. That's sugar flare yellow going in. Uh, Chroma apricot. Um, but I've also got rainbow dust apricot. And then um, Chroma brown and a bit of Chroma black. So we're going to build the colour up slowly. Um, again, when it's going, it's quite noisy, so I can't really talk. I know, something that shuts me up. It's a miracle. Okay, what I'm trying to do is avoid the, the white areas on him. So to do that, I'm going to mask off areas with my paper towel to try and um, stop him getting too, too coloured around those. So let's actually give it a go. So um, this, I'm going to make sure my PSI is about 30. I if your PSI, if your PSI is too low, um, it'll splatter, and if your PSI is too high, um, you'll get you'll get way too much pressure coming out, and and you'll get colour everywhere. So PSI about the middle. Um, if you wanted to ever do like a galaxy cake, or you wanted to do the insides of orchids, take your pressure right down, and it'll splatter beautifully. But normally, you want kind of a nice even colour. If you find it's getting mottled. Or like dappled or anything like that. Have a look at your PSI and check. Fine. Okay. I'm gonna disappear, disappear over here a minute. So firstly, I'm just gonna walk about on here a bit until I get my eye on because I want it to be. I want it to be really, really soft. I just be here because I'm going over here. I'm just going to work in. I'm going to work in, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm going to work in very gentle circles. And I'm keeping my distance. Okay, the, the temptation is to get really close in on it, but that's just going to give you really, really hard lines. So try and back up and keep your distance a little bit. So I don't want this bit to be coloured. So what I'm going to do is put my paper down and use that as a barrier. Okay. And then if I want more, I'm going to have to get a bit closer. So I'm going to go around the other side. I'm just going to work around my phone here. Again, not the easiest thing to do. So a top tip. Do not turn your cup upside down just because you're trying to get underneath something. I know it seems like a sensible idea, but believe me, all your paint will come out. And anyone who's laughing at me, when you turn your cup upside down to get the chin, I want you to send me a message saying, oops, I turned my cup upside down because everybody does it. So I'm just going to work in up here now. Again, I've got white here, so I can just mask off that area. Okay, and then I'm just going to turn this around so it's slightly easier for you to get to that way. I'm going to do the same thing. So I've got the white there. So I'm just going to mask it. Now, the thing about airbrush is it only goes in a straight line. So there's no point airbrushing over here and thinking that it's going to come back across. It will literally, it's a bit like a torch. If you imagine it as a torch, that will help you visualize where it's going to be. So if I want to airbrush down here, I have to get down to it. Okay? So we've done the yellow. Now I'm going to layer up some orange to cover over. Let me just check. Just check. Uh, I've got. Is that a new high? Hello, new person. <laughs> There's obviously something about being in a group that it doesn't tell me. It just it's calling you all Facebook user. So if you could let me know who you are, then uh, that's a little bit helpful. Um, okay, so there's the yellow. The reason why we've got the yellow on is to add depth. Now we can add the orange, but we'll still have some of the yellow coming through, so it acts like a highlight. The whole point about airbrushing is that you're going to have 
highlights and shading all the way through. Um, and you can't get that unless you put the colours in. So let's go again. Again, blocking off the areas we don't want to shade. Come around again. Now I'm going to go down to T zone. Blocking up here. So, can you see I'm doing, when I'm doing this, I'm doing very gentle circles. The reason I'm doing gentle circles. It's because if I do, if I do a line here and a line here and a line there and a line there and a line there, can you see I get two hot spots at either end? But if I'm doing a very gentle circle, it's nice and even, and it's that evenness that I'm after. So again, I'm going to walk on and off. Start on my paper, walk on, mask out any area I don't want to get. Walk off. I'm just going to come a bit closer. Finish up right now. I'm just going to soften in this edge, that edge and that edge, because when you put a mask on, it's quite a blunt end. So you can just soften it in a bit. Do you want that? Do one there. Okay. I know I'm a bit closer to the screen on this side, but that's because I wanted to actually talk to you guys this time. Um, with the wider ones, they're all very cool, but I can't really see what anyone's saying. But just literally come up and do the ears. Um, if I put my paper behind, I can stop it. Oh, I've run out of colour. Um, I can stop it going anywhere else. Oh, my lamp's just fallen off over there. I'm going to go rest for that in a minute. Okay. I'll just turn that off for a second. Has anyone got any questions at the minute whilst I go rest for this lamp? I'm going to have a bit of extra light. There we go. Let's see if there's any questions before I go on. Yeah, well, you're a flamingo wasn't annoying. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, everyone needs an airbrush. There's, there's, there's no way, no, no arguing with that one. Um, they open up so many opportunities because you can shade with it. You're not stuck with one color. You can shade with it. Now, can everyone see that that tiger is now looking quite shiny? That is our warning. If you carry on whilst that's that shiny, it's going to start running. The color will start bleeding, and then once you get bleeding airbrush color, you're really in quite a lot of trouble. So um, I'm just going to give that a second just to dry off a little bit before we turn it down. It says, where did I get my, is that Chroma colours? Um, Chroma, I just buy them off Amazon. Um, I don't know why a lot of the cake decorating companies um, don't um, have them. Uh, eBay or Amazon, I almost always, yeah, yeah, e yeah, Chroma, yes. Yeah. eBay or Amazon, I always buy them from there. And I love the Chroma brown. I absolutely love it. Chroma brown is my my favourite. It's such a it's it's a much uh, more yellow brown, whereas uh, like all the other ones like um, Sugar Flare and all the other companies they're really like brick browns. But if you think about most dogs, they're not. There's I mean there's occasional like red red dogs that are kind of like a red brown, but most of them um, like Springer Spaniels and things they're a really nice chestnuty brown and and the Chroma does it all day long. So I always make sure I've got chroma brown in because I get really frustrated when I've got any of the other browns and then you're trying to do like I say a spring spaniel or they sort of that that sort of like chestnut brown and you get stuck because you've got this really red brown you, you can't get the red out of it. Um, I've been I can mix colours as well, but chroma brown's my always go to, and I like the chroma apricot as well. I think if you look at it, I think that's a really nice tiger apricot. Whereas again, a lot of the other oranges they're really like sickly sweet oranges. So my advice, rather than going brand specific. Uh, which is why um, I don't stick to one brand, is is get a few different brands of the same colour because you'll find they're uh, 
you get different tones through them. This only works for people who are completely obsessed with animals. Obviously, if you're doing purple, I'm sure purple is purple. But, um, <laughs> if you're doing any variety of somebody's dog, they'll tell you it's the wrong brown all day long, especially if they're breed specialists. So, Maria, need to adjust the pressure. Yes. Uh, if you have pressure on too high, it's going to layer the colour in really, really fast. And that just means you've got no space to do anything with it. You're just going to have a one hit. Um, Go at it. Also, my airbrush is dual action. Um, Maria, I can't remember what airbrush you've got. Have you got one of the eyewaxes from me? Did you not do that in the end? I can't remember. Um, dual action means you press down to get the air going and then you pull back to get the paint going. So you've got much more control. If you've got a, um, a basic caked airbrush, they're single action. I call them um, spray and pray because you literally, you pull back, you get a full whack of power and the full whack of colour at the same time. And if you happen to have that in slightly the wrong place, you're absolutely screwed. Um, I almost swore then because I know most of you on here, but there's a couple I don't, so shh, I, I will not swear. Um, yeah, you're absolutely screwed. So dual airbrushes, dual action airbrush means that you get a bit more control. You do have a dual action. Well, there we go. So you're, you're halfway there. So have a look to see if you can pull that pressure down and then keep walking on your paper until you've got your pressure right and then go across. It's so much better to do a couple of layers than it is to just kind of hit it in one go and then being completely stuck. Um, I actually find once people, they're too nervous to start their airbrushing. And then when they get their confidence, they get too confident. And then they end up with like really over airbrushed tape. I think it takes more skill to know when to stop your airbrushing than it is to know when to when to start it. So, so it's kind of like a double edge. I've got to get people through the fear to start it. And then I've got to pull them back as well. So that they, <laughs> because they get too confident and they go over the top and you find your middle ground eventually, which is why practicing is the best thing because you'll find that middle ground. You'll start, you'll be too scared, then you'll be too confident and you'll mess it up. And then you'll come back to the middle ground. Uh, okay, I think it's dried a bit. So I just want to tone the color down a bit um, and we'll get onto the brown to do that. brown all oh, this brown's new and i didn't open it hang on a second this is where it spills all over and you laugh right oh, okay see look did you can you see that what where is it look i tested it on there and it's splattered everywhere so do make sure you're on your paper So I'm just going to test it on there, pull that brown back, and then I'm going over the same areas again. And what it will do is it will start darkening down, taking the heat out of that orange. So I can just run some around the shading, around the board as well. So again, where you want to airbrush, you have to turn and face. It's not going to be able to airbrush over the top because you go too far over the top. You're going to pour all your colour in. It's the same effect as if you try and flip the whole airbrush over and decide to something. Which you will do. We've all done it. So I'm just again go around the edge oh, hang on, just moved in we are working in reverse so again, just I'm just knocking the heat out of this orange all the way around because I don't want it I like the orange being there but I need to get it under control with this brown I'm just going to go in the we go. Whilst we're on the brown, we can have a little go. My touch is a bit too high as well. I'll just take some of the heat out of it. I can turn the pressure down a little bit and then have a little play in Hound's mouth, just to kind of give me a bit of that, a bit more shade in there. I've got uncontrolled spraying, and as I said before, uncontrolled spraying means that your needle has almost 
You should be able to press down without any paint coming out. Yeah. Okay, and one last thing, if you want, one last thing, come back to you. If you want to add a little bit of black, I always add it when I've still got some brown in. The reason being, I would rather work with a really dark brown than with a black. Um, I don't believe that anything in nature is really black, and I think cakes look really funny when people start layering in all this black. They look really cartoony, like pop party, and I don't. I think they lose that softness. I think that's probably pretty much the only difference in my work to some of the other people who do animals is that um, I stay off black, so I keep it a bit softer. So with the black, you don't have to use black. Um, you can just avoid it altogether. But if you want to have a go at black, if you feel like taking your life into your hands, you can have a go. You want to go on your paper first? See, so that I can see just the softness of it. And then I can start just bringing in a few details. So like if I wanted to soften the, I didn't do this on the white tiger, but if I wanted to soften these um, stripes down, it's really nice to run a little bit of airbrush over your stripes. You have to have a lot of control over it. And again here, the closer you go, the more power it's going to get, but also the finer line you're going to get. But again, I wouldn't do it until you've got quite a lot of control over your airbrush because he darkens down incredibly quickly. A little bit of black goes an awful long way. It doesn't make it look sexy though. That's the problem with black is it looks really cool and you get completely addicted to doing it because it looks so, so cool. And then you step back and you're like, oh, whoops, I've gone a little bit too far. All right, I'm going to step off it now. There we go. How's that? I'll just turn that off. Oh, it's so noisy. Right, let's come back to you guys. Why am I the only man watching this? It's okay because I don't see a name, so no one will know you're a man, but you've just admitted it, so now we do. Do you ever wear a masked airbrush? Absolutely. That, it's horrible. Um, I've got one of those uh, great big Darth Vader masks um, that have got the big um, filters on the side, and I use those. The problem with that is I can't then talk to you. So please wear a mask, because this stuff's horrible. And everyone who says to me, oh, it's edible, it's okay. I was like, yeah, but when was the last time you inhaled a burger? So mask is really important. Um, I know people, and she would never admit it, um, because she says that she didn't want to scare her students. But I know someone who's been airbrushing, teaching and airbrushing for their whole life, and they've given themselves quite severe asthma by, um, by doing this stuff. So please, please do wear a mask. Uh, if you can find one, a uh, different game at the minute, isn't it? But yeah, I always wear masks, that's no problem. Uh, at the end, can you write in comments the name of the spray gun compressor and the colour brands, please? Okay, um, yes, I can do that. Um, in the meantime, because you're here, can I tell you that I have been working on an online cake school? Um, I've been trying to do it for a long time, but I'm always so busy with client works and, and real real classes that I've not been able to. But I've worked really hard in the last six weeks and I wanted to launch it tonight for you guys. Um, I'm going to put the link in for you to have a look. It is this guy that I've made. Bring him in. Uh, oh, hang on. There. So that's who I've made. It's over two hours worth of footage. I've done um, a proper PDF walkthrough. Um, and I've also got all the recipes on there, all the templates and everything. It's £19. And what I'm going to do is I've also put on um, another full length tutorial for a sea turtle, beautiful sea turtle. That's another load of video footage, more templates and everything. And I'm going to put that on for a pound. So if 20 pounds gets um, two, both tutorials, there's about four hours of footage. And um, I'm going to start a, just for the bulldog, and I'll do lives every week. So um, to recap on the video, so you watch all your video footage in your own time and everything, and then we'll do lives in the group where I'll re-sculpt his face and I'll re-sculpt his paws and everything. So I'm going to put the link on. Um, it's www 
thecakeillusionist.co.uk forward slash bulldog, but I'll also add it here. And I'm going to give you guys um, 48 hours ahead before I launch it on the main page um, at a different price. But I wanted to do something for my little community group because you guys have been supporting me and hopefully you'll carry on and support me if, if everything if everything I've done in the last six weeks you've liked and you've got something out of if you could support me on this um online cake school that'd be really helpful I'm actually halfway through filming the next full tutorial as well which is chimpanzee so hopefully within two weeks we'll have another one as well the chimpanzee so then we'll have the bulldog the sea turtle the chimpanzee and i will just keep building it and i'll keep putting new tutorials i'm filming them really early in the morning because it's the only time in my house when anyone's quiet is when they're asleep so i'm getting up getting my butt out of bed at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> to film all this stuff to bring this online um sculpting school it's called the cakey Digital sculpting school and the first one that's running live is a bulldog and so if you sign up to that you get the turtle um you get the turtle sea turtle for free uh sea turtle for a pound so it's 20 pounds for both and then i will see you in the bulldog group and i will do some live sculpts with that as well so that's my that's my sales pitch for tonight if you could help me out with that then it means that um i can start bringing some money in again because like everyone else all my work has stopped so this is my way of hopefully and hopefully say that the lives i've been doing over the last six weeks if they've been useful to you then you feel you can help me out on on that and we can build something really really cool uh yes i can do a th <laughs> please tell me who you are when you're when you're saying because i've just got a facebook user i've got no idea who i'm talking to um yeah i'm going to start so with the online cake school i'm going to start doing the proper in-depth tutorials to say the the bulldog i did first because everyone is always asking me how i sculpt my dogs so that i thought would be a great one the sea turtle is just a really really nice uh, beginner way of getting into airbrushing uh, it's beautiful and then uh, the chimpanzee because it's got different face structures and everything but after that i'll just start building it the more people can support me with this uh, cake school the more tutorials i can put into it and the more the more i can just build it and build it and then i'll start running like groups of courses together so um that would be really awesome um i wonder if can i leave a comment here no i'll have to put it on in a minute so i'll put that on and i'll, I'll share share a few bits and pieces uh sylvia <laughs> normally where would i buy a mask like this from um normally anywhere right now nowhere um you can't buy them anywhere all the all the ppe is being given to the uh, nhs so you're going to have to hang fire on a little bit probably use one of your cloth ones that you've made and and use that uh, what if hopefully everything goes back to normal then you'll be able to easily ah christine okay uh hopefully soon you'll be able to easily get them um the one i've got comes from b and q and as i say it's a great big respirator thing looks terrifying you feel like Darth Vader in it and it says it's a one month disposable i just realized it's got black on mine. one month disposable uh, but i figure that's if you were on site and you're working every single day nine to five so if you're just doing what was that that was about 10 minutes of airbrushing that's going to last you an awful long time like a year no problems at all so that's the one i've got um i think they work a lot better but the, at the moment i don't think you'll be able to get one anywhere so uh what, what else have we got do one with a threaded rod structure yes yep i will definitely um this online cake school is going to be my new my new baby it's going to be my new thing i'm going to now i've gotten over the fear of it i've gotten over the fear of lives and now i've gotten over the fear, fear of filming my own tutorials and stuff so i'm, I'm a happy bunny at the moment um but i just need people to get behind me on it um that would be Right. So are we all happy? Anyone got anyone else they want to ask about airbrushes and things at the minute? Have you all got airbrushes? Are they sitting in their boxes doing nothing? Should be illegal. If they are. Please get them out. It's really important. Um, get them out, have a play. You can once you get over that fear, it never comes back again. So so the sooner you get over it, the sooner you can get on with your life and, and then airbrush are amazing things. Because I think the difference that's made just in five minutes is something else. Okay, if there's no more questions, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for joining me. I will be over on the main page tomorrow doing a hippo, but I wanted to start um, bringing some content into the community group as well. So I promise that I won't bombard you with lives all the time. I just, I just wanted to try and help out a little bit. So I'm going to say, have a lovely evening and see you later. Take it easy. Bye. Yes, no, airbrush, get the airbrush out of the box. Bye.